premature end for Team Secret. We're about to find out. Let's go back to the commentary team. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're live here at Key Arena. I'm LD. I'm joined to my right by Blitz. Blitz, a lot we want to talk about here as the draft concludes. Ehome, very balanced, very versatile, leading 1-0 against Secret. I do want to follow up on what the analyst talked about, which was that Ehome prefers the Dire. That is true, but they not only prefer the Dire, they prefer it over first pick. They actually had selection this game, and they still go Dire. Yeah, on the flip side, we saw Secret. They had the option last game. Instead of first pick, they opted to go for the Radiant side, so both teams get what they want. And it, I guess it brings to mind Cedic as well, another team who really prioritizes Dire, and in some ways, it was something that was discussed yesterday, is it feels like maybe Cedic has influenced the way other teams are starting to pick and decide what they prioritize in the draft, because they're just winning so much on that Dire side, and we're gonna see it again here. And, and with that, the teams will get underway. Game two has begun. Ehom leading Secret, one to nothing. Secret, a loss here, puts them in the lower bracket, something I think that would really mess up most people who did a bracket before the event. So with that, let's talk a little bit more more about a, a couple of the points that you brought up during the draft. The first thing that you mentioned was you feel like CTY has really matured a lot as a player. Yeah, before he has a nickname that isn't all too flattering, it's the six minute god, but I mean, we saw in that last game, he struggled really hard in the laning phase. He had such a good start getting a kill. He had the first bounty rune of the game and Arteezy still manages to solo kill him in the lane. But after the 20 minute mark, it was all CTY. Once he gets that bloodstone, leading the charge every single time, doing zips across the map, playing absolutely fearlessly, initiating and forcing those inopportune BKBs by Arteezy. It just shows the maturation of a, a great player. Somewhere along the way, and, and who knows if it was ROTK, if it was Lanham or DDC, or perhaps someone else he played with, he, he had discipline instilled in him, because this is a player that would go on tilt when he started at Dota 2, and it's been true for a lot of the younger players as they rose through the scene. He actually left the game for a while. He was starting to play League of Legends, but man, he's back in a big way. We might have a rumble here off the bat. It's ZYF up in front, taking some initial harassment from Puppy, and three heroes are going to come in. They get off the battle hunger. Just really wanted to secure this rune. It's CTY engaging, but the cast will bounce. Oh, this could be bad for Ehome off the bat. DDC, the body blocks from Zai. Very nicely done. The lift, not going to save him. And Secret get right back to work, taking the first blood and grabbing the bounty rune there, although Arteezy did not get the bounty rune bottom. That was grabbed by RTK, who harassed him pretty heavily here to start, but Arteezy's got a lot of regen. Seven tangos and a salve, so he was ready to trade. And I like this from Secret this game. They've actually given the mid lane back to S4, who's playing the Shadow Fiend, a hero I thought they were incredibly successful with, but I don't like to see S4 playing those mech carriers that naturally just sit in the back of the fight don't really have playmaking potential. I feel like this is S4's role. This is how he want a TI. This is what they want to get back to. Giving him a hero that can just do a lot on the map. Yeah, and it's a hero that can has a nice kind of balance, as, as you're getting at. Not only can he scale with farm, but he doesn't really have to sit and farm. Once Shadow Fiend gets that first item, the treads maybe as well, he can start making plays, and, and then Arteezy can play the four protect one with Shadow Fiend more in a, a team fighting type role. So it is a more versatile opening. They are going to make a move here on Zai top lane, though. Try to chase him at the same moment. There's also action bottom. It looks like Zai is taking heavy rocket barrage damage. RTK able to surge away in the bottom lane. Zai the man in danger. Puppy with the body blocks. Beautiful blocks, but he's going to take the rocket barrage and Instead, oh, he played so well to almost save Zai, but unfortunately, this is a gyrocopter, and that meant he was, well, he was right there to take a hailstorm of rockets on round number two. Yeah, that's the strength of the gyrocopter, is that the rocket barrage might be one of the top two spells in the game at the early phase, with just one or two levels. It has kill potential, which is pretty absurd, and that tells you why this gyrocopter is so favored, because pretty much any support pairing with the gyrocopter is successful. That's what allows you to see heroes like Dazzle picked up, where they're not typically the best laners. Same with the Night Stalker, but gyrocopter makes everything okay for your supports. I gotta say, they, we, we've got some great signs here. I don't think I've ever been portrayed as Kawaii, but this might be the first time. Oh, the wow one. <laughs> <laughs> we saw that guy, he has yeah. really sick hair. Yeah, he does. He's That's got amazing really hair. One. He also has hair, which is more than some of us can say. Wow, don't, don't sell your <laughs> <laughs> period that was like short. the worst attempt to cover. <laughs> You're like, mm. there's nothing I can I, say. I here. only feel sort of bad for people with that hair. Because I'm friends with Ted. I'm, I'm going to shave your head me. one night when you're not looking. I'm okay with that. Are you? Yeah, it'll grow back. Do you so want to do it here live? It does. <laughs> well, we're back underway. It seems that'll have to wait for another day as Lanham takes a lot of tower shots on the way out. He's probably just going to have to go heal. They do get the kill. It forces his fountain back, though, and, and Zai's going to be able to stick around in this lane, so he should get a little more space for experience. Look at the mid lane now. Now, this used to be an incredibly TA-favored matchup. There were some nerfs to the hero. There were some bugs fixed. 
CTY winning the lane so far slightly. He's 8-3, and three, but it feels like nowadays the Shadow Fiends tend to do a lot better in this 1v1. It is still a TA favorite matchup just because it's incredibly hard for the SF to get kill potential on her. And that's mm -hmm. what you always want to look at as a mid laner. How can I kill him versus how can he kill me? It's really hard for the SF to get a solo kill, but with two traps, CTY could feasibly get a kill. and That's what you have to uh, concern yourself with. And at the same time, SF's weakness is that he can't really CS in the early game, but S4 is doing a really good job of keeping up. S4 will get the rune bottom, courtesy of Kuroki's rotation, but it was RTK putting a lot of pressure there. Has hit level two, no stacking just yet for the Darkseer, nor for the Shadow Fiend, but you got to imagine between those two plus the Anti-Mage, even the TA, I mean, there's four heroes in this game that can definitely benefit from jungle stacks across the map, so I wouldn't be surprised to see the support start working on that soon. RTZ with an aggressive blink in bottom. A matchup, I remember Black used to play this matchup a lot, and he, he felt like it's a matchup that anti mate should really be able to dominate if he can get aggressive from level one. Just walk up to him, mana burn, you trade your HP regen, but you get rid of all of the Darkseer's mana. But this time they didn't have a support here when the lane started. So RTK's already hit level three, he's almost got his soul ring, having more space than what you normally would get. As you said that, he did exactly what you wanted. He blinks forward aggressively on him, already getting two levels of the mana break just to get aggressive. And Arteezy doing a good job of not needing any real supports, but I mean, Secret, they're kind of showing their hand there. They're saying to themselves, okay, if we're back into a corner, game two, you know, if we lose this, then we get dropped to the lower bracket. We're going to pick Arteezy the Antimage. How much space do you see Secret getting in their jungle right now? They have a Shadow Fiend and an Axe who both really want to use that space, but there's a TA in this game. You can put traps in the camps. You can also ward block them. They have a Night Stalker who's a pretty aggressive roamer. Do you think Ehome's going to be able to get into the jungle and shut them down? Uh, do you see them getting aggressive here in like the next five minutes? I think during the second nighttime, it's going to be really crucial for them to get aggressive on the map mm -hmm. everywhere. They just have to apply pressure. I actually felt like Secret, you know, they got their game plan off in the last game. They were able to apply pressure. They got aggressive in the jungle. It just took that one terrible fight where they have track, you've got a storm with the Bloodstone, but they're, those things don't exist this game. And I feel like Ehome kind of read their strategy correctly this game as well. And they're saying, okay, we have to apply pressure. We can't just let Secret get comfortable, take our own jungle, and then slowly just kind of throttle us to death. We yeah. have to get aggressive. We have to pick a lineup that's just going to run at them. And I feel like that's what they have here. Uh, one thing also worth mentioning is they did not have a very good Roche lineup last game. They ultimately got the Medine and they, they took Roche, but it, it wasn't like a lineup built for that. But this game, they have the Templar Assassin, something that C-Deck has also done quite a bit where Shiki will play it. And I mean, C-Deck, I think more than Ehome really value the early Roche, whereas Ehome will kind of take it as a part of the flow of the game when they, they feel like they have the space for it. But definitely something Secret have to keep in mind. And until they get the Blink Dagger and the Axe, not really going to be as good at creating pressure around the map. They, they are pretty farm dependent here until they get the Shadow Fiend mech and the, the Axe Blink. Yeah, the Templar Assassin, there was a time period where we saw her pick all the time when she first came out. She was even like first pick material. Yeah, she was just a lane dominator yeah. with almost no equal, but as time went on, you kind of uh, saw her relevance drop off, but I think the biggest change to her was just the fact that the Deso, the cost of it is so low, you can go for the immediate Roshan after you grab it. Just you and one other hero can pretty much do it, and once you're able to get a 15-minute Roshan as a result of that, she can just snowball, and her natural weakness is she can't really initiate for you. Once you have an Aegis, you can't really stop her from going in. And she could do it so safely because of the traps as well. So you always have some vision, you have an idea yes. where they are, and this is a, the analyst called it a run at you lineup, and it can be, it definitely can be. They've got Gyro, we've seen this hero going for aggressive ganks very often in the tournament, Night Stalker, Great Roamer. They have Iron Shell surge potential on TA, that's terrifying to put it mildly, but they don't have to. They can also farm Ancients, they can farm the jungle, they can go for at least a decent late game. So it feels like a very flexible draft, and even if it goes late, you've got Darkseer versus Anti-Mage. Used to be very annoying to play against him with the wall, and still could be a threat here. Also, you can get the Shadow Fiend Aura as well, so yeah. pretty irritating to play against. For me, the onus is on Ehome's lineup to mm -hmm. really get aggressive. Because so you want to see them take the fight to see? Yeah, they have to in the early game, because like I said last game, there's no real natural counters to Storm last game. Yeah. Like, yeah, you've got the B Bane's Fiend's grip, but that's in an ideal world. Yeah. But this game, the same exists for Arteezy's Anti-Mage. Lift is a terrible ability once the Anti-Mage has a Manta style. Same with that silence from the Night Stalker. There's almost no hero on Ehome that's going to build the Sables. Maybe in the ultra, ultra late game, you'll see a Darkseer get a Hex. But more often than that, we'll see him get a Blink Dagger, the Mech, the Shiva's Garden. I actually think 
third item, he has to go for the Hex here because there's just no disables. I mean, we saw what happens if you don't get that early lockdown on Anti-Mage earlier today in the, the EG Complexity match. Uh, some, I, I was talking to some of the players, some felt that we could have seen uh, an Orchid rush from Swindle. Uh, also a possibility for a second item, Scythe of Ices. We will unpause, we're gonna get back underway now. Uh, teams just needed a moment there, but it didn't have the lockdown, and Arteezy, it was a worse game to lock him down than this one, like they really had nothing on the Anti-Mage, but this game still isn't exceptional once he gets the Manta. Yeah, it's gonna really come down to how aggressive Ehome can get, and I think that's why they take the TA, just because they can go for the Roche and then play objective gaming, and I think that's how they have to play, because once that Anti-Mage gets maybe three items, there's no real peer for him in this game, and the Gyrocopter does an okay job of keeping up, but the split push game especially is going to be so hard for them to deal with. Well, through the early laning stage, it looks like Ehom, their two main cores getting slightly more farm here, but uh, at least as far as the, the Gyrocopter goes. But uh, overall, the, the next wave of heroes on Secret doing a much better job of CSing. And as a result, they've already pulled ahead by 500 gold, closing in on 1,000 experience as we see Curl walk down into the river confidently going to place an Observer Ward on the high ground. That's a great ward to have. Is it's the first night time, and it's Lanham on the move. Puppy Tank going deep within the trees. He's created a little nest, but it's a trap, Puppy. Oh, he's just cornered himself in the end. E home with the big tower dive. They'll get some experience, and now the pressure going out immediately. You can see RTZ starting to constantly hit creeps. Wants to counter push this bottom lane a little bit. They know Darkseer is likely not here because of that lane ward, and in fact, he's not. RTK off in the woods, trying to play the jungle game. So for now, the tower pressure early going the way of E home, and well, TP actually getting canceled. Secret, really not gonna be able to defend this tower at this point. Yeah, but at the same time, uh, this gyrocopter isn't keeping up with anti mage farm. The anti mage is miles ahead of anybody if you want to look at it that way. 34 CS a just five minutes. It's, it's seven right CS a minute. He's almost flawless here, and he's up against the dark, so you have to last it under your tower even at times, which can be very difficult. So, as you point out, Arteezy having a great start to this game. And that's going to bode bad news for Ehome as they want to try to get aggressive as fast as they can. CTY is about to pick up that level six, which he does. And He's going to try to look for opportunities on S4, but S4 is just playing the patient game. He's forcing out the lane as fast as he can and making it really difficult. So what CTY wants in an ideal world, you want a decent creep advantage, so the S, there's nothing that can just break your effect. If you right-click the SF in the middle of a creep wave, you're just going to get right-clicked back. Here's the smoke, and let's see where they head. Kuroki moving towards mid. RTK, I think, getting nervous. They don't have vision on the enemy supports right now. In fact, the wards that they have really only see the lanes, and there's nobody laning top. Only S4 currently visible on the map. Kroki wraps around towards mid. He gets the lane ward down, if nothing else, getting them some vision as well. RTK looking for the ancient stacks. Curl may run into him, but he's alone for now. He needs backup if he wants to get this kill. The paint's coming out. They're going to try to close the gap. RTK even surges forward, and it's right into a cask. Oh, the aggression. It might be too much. The cast not bouncing back. Can he get the neutral tonight? RTK, he wants it, but S4 says no. Shuts the door and takes down RTK. And that was a level five Darkseer at six minutes. Pretty high level of experience and, well, 300 experience win the other way. Yeah, and it just makes it even easier for S4 to lane against the Templar Assassin mid. He's not even doing a bad job. He doesn't really have uh, any more jungle stamps to go back on, but it is naturally harder for the TA to go for that. She can eventually rely on this ancient stack, but as you saw, I mean... Oh, they're going on mid. It. S4 in trouble. There's the melt strike. They have it in the background. Puppy looking to hang on for now. They'll let CTY take the tower. Does he get another trap and go for this? Uh, he decides it's too risky. DDC was wrapping around as well, but they keep S4 healthy. They're going to get a sentry down in the lane once again. The raises forcing the wave out and buying S4 the time he needs to heal up, but not to be deterred. This is something we've seen more and more as the tournament goes on. The aggressive moves from Gyrocopter. ZYF deep behind enemy lines of S4 stops for this camp. Oh, oh, he's gonna actually oh no! S4, they came from behind! Oh, ZYF making the plays. Uh, th this is how Secret normally play. They really push it to the limit with their farm advantage. We saw it a lot through the group stage, but Ehome have been reading that, and oh, they're looking they to punish it, and now they want Puppy. Grave's about to cool down here, but he's so much on his own. Even if he gets the Grave off, he won't. CTY looks to lop his head off, but it's actually DDC, the man to get the last hit. It's that ward down here that isn't in vision of the sentry. Secret just naturally assumed if there was going to be a ward, it'd be on top of this cliff. But it's just out of range. It's, uh, or, they or, just spotted him all the way through. Or even more in the middle of the lane. You've got the, the sentry there as well, but both sentries just missing. 
And they're chasing Kuro's a bit for more. Uh-oh, Kuro in danger here. The cast bouncing. Beautiful bounces from Kuro, but a follow-up trap, and they continue pursuit. In comes the anti-mage. RTK fairly low on Mani. He's going to surge his way forward. Still healthy in terms of HP. And they silence oh, RTZ. Can they focus some time? Five seconds to go. The grave. I don't know if it's enough. He runs the other way. Last auto tank. Can they get out to blink? He makes it. RTZ survives. They surge. No vacuum. And now oh, the turn. S4 marching back He's in. got the move speed advantage. The, there's the cast. It is going to bounce once to CTY. That's all they need for DDC. One more auto tech. They pound him down. ROTK also forced to run. Secret bouncing right back. They could have gone for an easier support kill, but they thought they had the bigger one, that juicy anti-mage and the well-timed grave and the blink just cooling down. Ehome, they get thwarted in their effort for the bigger kill. And that was perfectly timed. And if they had been successful with that, they could have denied RTZ a lot of time could have made it incredibly hard for him to get back into the jungle, but with that play, all of Secret rotating down just to be able to protect their anti-mage and that jungle. The grave was perfectly timed. Arteezy waited out that blink for as long as he possibly could, managed to TP out at the last second instead of just running away, which I think was the correct decision. Uh, but CTY is going to do some... Oh, they want S4 now. Down. This one's going to be hard to escape from. Call down hits him once. He turns for the raise. He does bring RTK to a third HP, but that's not enough for the kill. Ehome. Again, the gyrocopter really showing his flexibility here, Blitz. He can do it all. He can farm the stacks, he can pressure towers way earlier than a hero like Anti-Mage, and he can also take these fights, giving CTY time to clear out the Ancients, and the Radiant Squad actually had vision of this, but they just don't feel like they have the levels or items they need to engage. The big one that they're... It's going to be a while, and the analyst mentioned that this would be a hard game for Zai. It really hasn't been a great one so far. He's level 6, but the Blink's still 1,600 gold away, and without that, it's tough for Secret to initiate. Yeah, what they're waiting right now is on Ehome to overextend like they did at that bottom push where they can catch them out, run them down, but I mean, that does rely on Ehome getting over aggressive and it's hard for Secret to really catch anybody out pre-Blink Dagger Axe. And I think that's kind of the weakness of their lineup. They have a lot of counter initiation, but their initiation game is incredibly weak, but they are putting a lot on RTZ right now. Because if this anti-mage gets incredibly farmed, they realize the type of position they're in. They can just play the split push game. He, he's done it out. before, he really has. We've yeah, seen a lot of impressive anti-mage games out of Arteezy, and I would say it's probably the hero he played the most coming into TI as well in pub, so definitely something he's been practicing and expecting to use quite a bit here. Yeah, he ran into me in like 30 pub games or something <laughs> like that, something absurd when I was on my smurf. Well, Every single game was anti-mage. That is Not what you get jersey. for being a dirty storm picker. What yeah, a great yeah. hero counter. Press one button, kill storm. <laughs> Lol. Great stuff, Arteezy. Wow. <laughs> no so, salt here. Yeah, you're so salty. It's coming out of your pores, my friend. We just flame each other now whenever we pick heroes. Yeah. Well, you're hero pickers, so you both You gotta be it. a random player nowadays to get respect. Yeah. And even then, if you random a good hero, you lose the exactly. respect. Exactly. <laughs> you have to random bad heroes. I just happen to random Storm a lot, but yeah, well, every... Ehome right now, trying to put pressure on this mid tower. CTY here by himself. Kuro's gonna There's go the, the cask. Stun. It's not gonna bounce at all, though. And with that, any chance of a kill is gone. And it's about to be, it's closing in on that next night time. May see some moves coming out from Ehome. You can already see the, the more aggressive trap placement in conjunction with these wards and actually a very unique one in the, in the trees here near the Radiant Tower mid. Not something you see often, but that's a cool trap to, to see a support trying to back somebody up. And uh, as you said, Secret, they want Ehome to come to them. And what do you know? Ehome are coming to them, but will this end the way they're hoping? That's the question that remains to be seen. Yeah, and one of their crucial disables, maybe their only real disable, DDC, is at this top lane right now. And it's not easy. He wants his level there. six. He really does. There's the trap coming in mid. That denies there. S4 with a good start to the fight. TP's going to come. But Calldown was ready for this. Arteezy runs away. It only connects on Kuro. And now they pound into the side with the rocket barrage. Almost half his health oh, gone. Slam him surrounded, though, in between two. Not that tanky anymore. Even Arteezy going to get involved. But this leaves S4 to the wolves. There's the grave. Well placed. A cast that bounces beautifully. The wall zoning some of Secret back. But Arteezy rushes in. He tanks the rocket barrage. He's got to blink away. And blinks to the south. That leaves Zai to be left for dead. And and hope he collected in the end by CTY. Oh, they found Kuro. He's way in deep. He does have a teleport scroll. Lift is ready. And they've also stolen the castle. They've got two ways to stop the TP. They'll start with the lift. And that's all they need. Ehome. It just feels like they're the stronger fighting lineup right now. A pretty decent engagement from Secret, but just didn't have the firepower. Yeah, this is not where Secret's game is strong right now. They have to just get Arteezy that battle fury so he can decide to split push, but 
right now, Ehome, they're perfectly content with taking that trade. Even with losing that Night Stalker in the early game, they're perfectly okay with that because it means that Secret are more willing to engage and commit to a fight, which is what they want. They have zero disables. They've got the Rubik Lift. That's about it. So they have to have Secret. You know, Secret has to be a willing dance partner for Ehome to get anything done. It's been a battle of vision, really, in both games. But this game, it feels like Secret is falling behind in the vision department here. They've only got one ward on the map. Still every Dire Tower life. The traps and deep wards continue to pile up. And you just toggle the Fog of War for Ehome. They see almost the entire Radiant Woods. And uh, their own wood's a bit less vision there. But they've got the towers up. So they've got control. And now they'll grab another tower. They also get their own mech. This to match what S4 has. So when it comes to team fight, Ehome are ready to rumble. They're moving on towards mid. Arteezy looking for split push, but he's not the Shadow Fiend type of hero that can quickly bring down a tower. He's going to blink into the enemy woods and just wants to keep the farm up. He knows the Battle Fury is the key. Slow the game down and buy time, but guess what? There's Vision. It's on Puppy and swarming in his e home. They may even run into Arteezy here. He blinks out. Oh no, Arteezy. This could be a devastating retreat. Oh, just gets out of range of the cooldown. Can he make it out? Puppy, uh, he'll be the man left behind for now. S4 not even going to try to help him. Death by the Fade Bolt. They still hold the level 4 Paralyzing Cast. Will they find Kuro the TP out? Uh, he'll make it. No vision on him, but the pressure mounts bottom. Arteezy! Oh, oh. oh, 43 HP. Now Kuro! <laughs> Even when they survive, it's only barely. He wants this Battle Fury, but the pressure on the map is there for Ehome. Yeah, they've got wards in their own jungle, that sentry to follow up to. It's pretty surprising that they decided to place it there, but... Clearly it pays off because they know if they're pressuring Arteezy's jungle, he's just going to rotate to theirs. So they're placing wards in both sides of the jungle just to make sure that the Battle Fury is slowed down as much as possible. And even if he gets to the Battle Fury, they want to be able to pressure him and just force him out of whatever section of the map he feels comfortable in. And it, home. They're going to start to get aggressive real soon because CTY, just 200 gold off of that Desolator. And once he grabs that, it's then really Then Anti-Mage dies in those exchanges. <laughs> he dies when probably one left hit. It's going to put even more pressure on Arteezy to be careful. Cooldown will come top lane, and they go on to S4. Even through the mech, he may drop here. Requiem is baited out, and they beat a retreat uh, with the Requiem down now. Oh, opportunity may beckon for Ehome to move in even deeper. But you wanted to see pressure. They had a lineup that could rush in and put a lot of pressure on the map blitz, and we are seeing it through vision, through hero movements, through smokes, and again they're moving forward onto Kuro, back back into the creeps. Kask is gonna stop this. Maybe Zai can turn it around. He's looking for the call. He's almost got his blink. Can't quite find the opening. So we'll see Arteezy also forced back. Battle Fury calling his name and he is going to get it along with the blink, but he's still got to farm that next item before he really comes online. In fact, they expect him to be at this camp, and Lanham is right about it. Arteezy silenced, quick TP out. What a reaction, but not enough! CTY slams the door with the Deso, and we see the Anti-Mage, not the most combat-worthy hero this early on. He's just not getting the space he's accustomed to. Now the blink forward, Zai, trying to throw DDC back, throws at the battle hunger, he retreats, but oh, good luck, my friend. Call downs there, maybe, maybe, should take down to this. Oh, the pain bolt. don't tell me he lives, don't tell me he lives. No mercy, he's dead. But that's just a Rubik. It's not too big of a deal in secret. They do respond and finally get something off the map, and Arteezy, he's still a little bit further than the battle, away from the battle fairy than he wants to be, and Ehome showing themselves on the map just so CTY can go for the solo Roshan. Finds a really fortuitous DD rune at the same time, and this is going to be such a huge experience lead and farm lead for him. And that's almost the blink as well, yeah. if he wants it. And once he gets that blink, it's going to be a guessing game for Arteezy, because if he misplaces his blink, CTY is going to run you down and pretty much two-shot you. And he still doesn't have the Battle Fury. And I, I mean, the risk is, the issue is, if you hold the blink, you start to lower your farming speed by a substantial oh, amount. At top, Zai's ready for this. They're looking for the jump in. They've got the blink call. It's on to ZYF to go. The death board to follow, but instantly canceled by RTK. Medical assistance has arrived, and they're going to turn it. Ehome now hunting for us for the TP out. Will be canceled. No void. They got him. He's down as well. Three, crumble. ROTK, the man of the hour, saving his team and turning the fights. And Arteezy now, he'll be pushed off the lane. He's not going to be allowed to farm. He still doesn't have the Battle Fury. It's on its way now. 
Boy, he's going to have to dig deep if he wants to turn this back. I, it's not even really the individual stars from Ehome that are really making a difference. It's their supports. This ward allowed them to see the Axe jump in. It's made such a huge impact. That's twice now that they've set up a gank using it. The first time they get Puppy, the second time they get three heroes out of secret. And this ward, it's all about the vision nowadays, as you said earlier on in this game. And it made all the difference in the world because wow. Ehome, they see that their gyrocopter is going to get initiated on. They instantly rotate three heroes to back them up. They correctly wow. guess that Secret are going to get aggressive, and the turnaround potential for them was huge. And it's such patient aggression. We see CTY melded bottom. He's very strong with an Aegis right now, but he doesn't immediately jump on Puppy. He waits until he walks close. He sees their support there from Zai, and then he backs. And that's really been the maturation process that you talked about, that he doesn't overcommit whether he's ahead or behind. He's just he's a more calm player in general now than Secret's turn. They want to make something happen. Puppy on the smoke. Maybe they get DDC here. There is a ward. Saw him walk by towards the secret shop. He's found a, an interesting nook here to try and hide within. Oh, they, the, know. Oh, they know about that nook. Ah, oh, DDC. Welcome to your new home. It's called the well. Zai with the dunk. Yeah, finally, Arteezy finally finding that farm time. He's already almost level 12. He's finally got that battle fury. Once he gets his Vlads, he can pretty much stay on the map for as long as he wants. He can do the jungle camps and... I mean, we've been talking about Ehome all game, and yes, they have been playing a really dominant game, but you still don't really have the best counters for this anti-mage. You don't really have the best disables, only the Rubik Lift. It doesn't last for very long. The Night Stalker Silence is not an opportune uh, silence. He can just man it off every single time, and it's going to get hard for them to keep up with him. And that's where... That's where Ehome want to keep it up. CTY is looking to do it bottom lane. He will press the tower forward, and... Drop it pretty low in terms of HP, but Puppy pings it out. They'll rotate in S4. And it, it does need to be reiterated that their cores are farming. S4, neck and neck infects are passing again the Templar Assassin on Ehome. And Arteezy still the leader. The have-nots are the supports, though. Looking at Kuroki, normally one of the most farmed supports in the game up there with AUI 2000. And he's doing a decent job, but this lineup needs a lot of space, especially for the two main cores, so... It's going to come down here to positioning, it feels like. Puppy and Kuro, not quite as much to work with item-wise. they got to do it just with, with sheer savvy and, and veteran wit. In all honesty, it's just the warding. ROTK, he has a gem that he picked up himself, so it's incredibly hard for Secret to keep up wards on the map. And so Secret, they're just playing behind their cores, kind of playing the guessing game, like you said, whereas E-Home supports are pretty much willing to go wherever they want because they have full vision, they can wait for the counter initiations. They're playing with full information right now, whereas Kuro and Puppy... They're playing the guessing game. You saw it at the top and here in this mid lane. They have no idea this is coming They're in. They're going. They're on to S4. The back's there. The call down to follow. He's completely surrounded. Doesn't even get off a spell, but the grave. It allows for a Requiem to turn this. And on to RTK to go. The Death Lord keeps on going. CTY the trapped Lord. in the trees. He's got to get out and help the team. Oh, they lose two. No two. Oh, the Blake will cool down, but the damage is done. And Arteezy says, wonderful. I'm going to cut the wave top. This tower will be mine. So much space. A lot of it feels like it came down to CTY getting caught in the trees. They couldn't do anything for the whole Death Ward. Just such good pay placement and play by Secret there. And the problem is for Ehome's lineup, it was like we talked about last game. The reason why we were so we were talking is if Ehome always had a chance was because there was no natural counters to the storm. It's the same thing for the anti-mage this game. And the disastrous thing for Ehome's lineup is they can't really make those mistakes. On paper, it's okay, we traded two for one, at least we got a core, but it's more like we committed five heroes to a fight and the anti-mage is farming the entire time and all we got was one hero. And boy, is he farming. Suddenly, it plans is up. He's still 30 CS up on his Templar Assassin. And now he's got a haste turn. He's going to blink in mid, looking to clear out the waves, and the pressure just begins to mount. The, the tower, tier one's still up mid and bottom. That's something Arteezy will definitely have his eyes on. Now moving towards the enemy ancients. Oh, this is a big stack. They can't allow him to take this. Is he going to chance it? You betcha. Onto the ancient stack he goes. RTK's in position on the high ground. Oh, this is going to be he able to take Arteezy, got to be careful. He's back, back into a silence. He can't blink. The greed, it costs him now. Ehome get just about every creep. Oh, they just, they just saw him and they knew. They knew what he wanted. That, that really hurts the economy. Arteezy thought if he sees the Night Stalker coming, he can just blink out, but it was that play by ROTK to drag him back with a vacuum, cancel the animation, unable to do anything as you're just flailing through the air. And it's nighttime as well. The vision just isn't the, that great for an anti-mage. Yeah, it was a huge high-risk, high-reward play, but Ehome completely punished him for it, and Arteezy can't afford to die like that because he's the only hero on the map that can go around and pressure like he is right now, but chancing it for that ancient stack... 
wasn't enough, and CTY just continues to farm level 16. No BKB on him. Decides to go for the Yashin. This is a huge glass cannon build, but he already does nearly 200 a hit with the Deso. They, they don't have the best damage over time here. There's a, there's a level one battle hunger, no points in poison touch. So there is potential for TA to, to get a little more aggressive in the item build, it feels like. Secret. They're going to need to rely on the team fight. They got to take them down together. They can't try to fight the PA 101. Nobody's strong enough. Maybe your late game anti mage can do it when you get to like an abyssal blade, butterfly type of level of farm, but he, he's not there yet. But he goes back to what he was doing before he got picked off. Arteezy into the top lane. And the secret game plan is pretty much going to continue the same way. Keep on pushing with the AM, hold with the other three, four. As for maybe poke your head out to hit a couple of creep waves. You may even have to rat it already into the trees. And, and E home, no, this is, this is the game plan for secret. And they've been mostly prepared so far. And they're just waiting for him to show his head. There's a lane ward here, top secret. They've not seen anyone from E home just yet. But. Arteezy is just biding his time. Now CTY will show himself. That alone is enough to discourage him. Are they thinking about a jump on CTY? This could be very bad for Secret. They're waiting. They're still waiting to get vision on somebody else. And they're not going to find it. CTY off into the jump. The rest of Secret do smoke. And they head towards stop. Oh, they're actually going to spot him out. They're going to go for this as fast as they can. And this should be a kill for Secret. Now CTY returns fire, Gem hits the deck, Sai tries to retreat with it, he survives with 10 HP! So low, but oh the turn! Arteezy also almost dead, there's a blink in three seconds, Arteezy's gonna have his this own blink in one, game. does he get the insta blink mount? No, he misses on both, the back too late, Arteezy heading back as quickly as possible. And now reinforcements arrive, they grab not only the Night Stalker, but far more importantly, the precious gem on Zai. That was the real price of that fight it off of them, being able to get some map control back is fairly significant because the Night Stalker, not a huge kill, but it's the gem that came with him that makes that so worthwhile. At the same time, it just creates a little bit more time. Ehome don't want to get into 4v5 fights, and while the Night Stalker's on the deck, they're going to wait for him to be able to come back and pressure the map again, and this is going to allow Arteezy to farm his own jungle for the first time in the game. <laughs> it's funny when you put it that way, but it really feels like it's come to that. Still, more space. He's down about 3k gold here in the enemy court, but Yasha's coming. And the big item that makes him far more difficult to take down is not unreasonably far away. It's, it's the Manta. But to match this economy, Ehome continue to stake their own Ancients. They've been very consistent about farming these as well. And as a result, they're able to hold steady with the, the 8k, um, more like 9 to 10k gold lead, it looks like. Puppy also looking to farm his own with the medallion. Big item out now. It's going to be a blink on RTK. And the combo potential is there. Call down. You've got the side blades that could splat through. Maybe DDC steals a, a Requiem. That would be a dream if he could pull it off for e home. For me, it just feels like the Death Ward from Kuro is going to be the huge game changer. We saw it in that last fight where he was able to keep it going the entire time. It was a large reason why e home didn't want to continue to commit. He's now bought himself a Ghost Scepter. It's going to keep him alive for quite long in these fights. Protects him from the TA, who normally just blinks in, melds, and then right-clicks him with Refraction, and he's pretty much done for. Yeah, he two shots you, so yeah. <laughs> you need that Ghost It's separate. a pretty clutch item. I am a little bit worried about Puppy, but he always has that Grave to rely on, and it's going to deter Ehome from just going in on him. But the next Roshan is going to be so huge, because with that Rosh, CTY, CTY is going to grab it, and they're just going to go all in. They're going to push wherever they can. They're going to have a lot of faith in the damage potential, and. I don't really know what the game plan is for Secret at that point. If he gets that Aegis, if they're able to take down that tier 2 mid, I think that Ehome should be able to go for the high ground because they want to hit the timing where RTZ still can't get into fights. I think even with the Manta style, RTZ can get blown up by just the TA himself was this farmed. We saw it from EG earlier today. They had fear on the split push. There was the amazing song from AUI that canceled two TPs. They held and it was enough for EG to ultimately take the game, that one big fight. Now, for Secret, the big way to cancel TPs is a blink ball from Zai. So that could be where they, they make their stand. It's not even the actual head-on fight, but just the split push of the anti-mage. Everyone from Secret right now is grabbing a ghost up there, and I think this is a good plan. Where's that defusal blade? <laughs> you just want to extend the game and the team fights for as long as you possibly can. Zai blinks in, you can just Call, pop your Ghost after and lead the fight around while your anti-mage picks off supports. That should be the game plan for Secret. Oh, DDC, blink, back on, and that immediate lift. Oh, the combo damage, S4 is a BKB, not using it. He pops his haste through it, and that is enough. Well, CTY thinking it's not. <laughs> Surged in. 
but they decide it's a bit too aggressive. He's got a full Davis on the courier. Uh, yeah. Well, that's that's gonna be trouble. I thought he was super far before, but I didn't even see that. <laughs> oh, that's that's, that's what the net worth chart is for. Uh, with this Daedalus complete. Could oh. just walk right into the Roche pit, potentially. And that's what CTY is gonna do, but the rest of the team uh, don't seem like they're gonna join him. He's chewing through this Roche. Oh he boy, it's really dropped fast. need any help right now. No. Gonna hit level 19 with this. That far exceeds anybody on Team Secret. Lanham just likes to watch, but nah, now he's had enough of it. Secret are deterred in their pressure top. Ortiz does shove the lane in. But Ehome distributing heroes wisely around the map. So they take the Roche, they don't give up any objectives. And now CTY back to the farm game, lacking a TP scroll. Maybe something Secret can play around here. I'm not sure what he could even drop for that. He's just going to be TP lit for now. This is such a weird timing right now because e home they're really strong. They don't really want to get picked off here because RTZ can just go for the split push. Every single time somebody from e home dies, RTZ just showed himself top, continues to go for the split push, but he has to be careful here at top. This game has just turned into like hearing the blink sound every five seconds. <laughs> just blink, blink. Now you see me, now you don't. Now he's just waiting for the wave. Uh, let's see, maybe one more wave, then I'll cut it. He, he knows that push that you mentioned could well be coming and safest way to stop it is don't actually approach the creep wave, just hide in the trees, take a page out of HY, HY's book and, and then cut them off only when truly necessary. So he's going to go for the split push here. He absolutely has to. There's no real way for them to stop this E-home push mid. He's, he's close to the Manta as well. Down. I'm not quite sure if that's enough though at this phase of the game as CTY just deals a ton of damage and He's got that Aegis that they have to deal with, too. Oh, oh Kuro! <laughs> that Ghost Scepter may well have been required if there was a crit coming in from the Daedalus. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that just saved his life. That was a good high. <laughs> that felt like a Daedalus hit. He's pretty happy about oh. what just happened right there. Here comes the creep cutting, and this is going to be the area where we see mo the most of our TZ is just that, that kind of rim near the enemy side of the map. But uh-oh, somebody isn't so mobile. It's Puppy trapped in the trees. Will end up going down. Meanwhile, mid CTY hoping that S4 dares to walk up the ramp. Oh, S4, DD room, BKB, no TP, no TP for S4, in trouble. There's the first trap, he could beat me out of the slow and try to man fight. He's gonna go for the Requiem, but no chance in hell, even through the damage of the Requiem, and it was a lot, the double wreck, not enough. Yeah, if you think at bottom, by the way, if that was a bad move by Puppy, it's, so if Puppy, if anybody shows us in the lane to kill him, it's just free information for Arteezy, because he knows mm. Guaranteed two heroes down there. One of them has that lockdown ability that he's afraid of before he has his Manta. And it allows him just TP top, split push that lane. It's almost like you just trade a support for information and farm on RTZ. And Puppy won't make a difference in this game anymore. <laughs> the Hellbear Smashers now, now also trolling the waves. If RTZ can't do it, the creeps will provide the needed support. So they have to go in with a, a very minimal wave, just their own Saturn Tormentor here. And that's not going to help against the backdoor regen. But that's now a completed butterfly on ZYF. This is just getting ridiculous for Rio. <laughs> they've got to be frustrated by this, but still with the lead here. In fact, they've been increasing it. A 12k gold lead, a 12k experience lead. Still, despite how aggravating it must be, they're, they're pulling ahead more and more. Yeah, but this is what Secret want. Just continue to extend the game. Hope that e home overextend like they did last fight. And I don't know if they have it in them. If they overextend again, is just going to get so much space. That's going to be like pretty much a butterfly or a basher after, or even close to an abyssal after one really bad fight. Yeah, and with this lead, you can't really throw it away, especially when you've got such a mobile hero. They have the blink. Lift to follow this up. Fall down is waiting as well. They're going to immediately force out the blink. They couldn't quite get the silence off. Arteezy could have mantled it anyway. Zai. Finishing with his own blink call. He's not going to connect the urn. Stopping a potential blink out. Now they silence him. Anti-Mage Illusions working on the carries here. Zion a bit of danger. S4 there to usher them away. But blinking forward is CTY the crit. That's not coming great. out, but the back now. S4 grave. A beautiful goal. And the death word. Look at it go. Kuro with the damage. Good enough, though. Now he's on the run, too. S4 may also fall. As RTK. CTY cutting off the path of retreat and executing secret inside their own base. Die. Heroics were attempted here.
but Body still hitting the floor in numbers. And with a lone catapult mid, they may just try to high ground it now. Oh, Heal just gonna go for bottom. They want bottom right now. They realize even if S4 has a buyback, he can't really do anything with just nine the, souls on the him. The right time now. grows desperate. Where does Arteezy go? If he goes mid, there's a tier two. There's a glint. If he cuts the way to bottom, it's too late. There's already a gigantic wave in here. There's no requiem on Chaffee, no PKB, no buyback either. They only have a buyback on the Witch Doctor who's lacking a death ward. Oh, Secret just, just trying to force cut the wave, but it's really not going to matter. They can't actually threaten Rax here. They can't even threaten tier threes. He blinks back towards mid, trying to prevent an additional land of Rax from falling. But Ehome, they strike gold again. They get yet another objective, and they zero in on what would be a crushing upset if they can take this 2-0 from Team Secret. And you know, Ehome farming out the jungle. They're probably just going to wait out the next Roshan if they can. It's up in just four short minutes, and this is what Secret have to work with right now. If you don't take any Tier 2 towers down, Ehome's not afraid. They realize, okay, we'll trade two or three creep waves for RTZ for a Rax every single time. What RTZ has to do is just force pressure on one of the Tier 2 towers, take it down, so at worst it's trading Rax for Rax, but Ehome every single time deterring him. They save all of their tier 2 towers, so when they go for that death push, there's not a whole lot that he can do, and that's a free Rax for them. A four-man team might go with it, and CTY is just so far behind. He has a full He's got MKB. no KB. No, do they even have a butterfly? No, it's it, just a preventive measure. RTC hasn't even picked up a component for a butterfly yet. Now, he could buy one, but... I, I, butterfly, normally your go-to item to maximize the split push just for the, the raw attack speed on your hero, and it does benefit the illusions a bit from the stats, but uh, he's, <laughs> I don't know. At this point, you're just not ban fighting CTY. That, that phase of the game feels over, barring an amazing team fight. What scares me more for Secret, Arteezy's doing his best to try to catch up, but S4 is just so under farmed right now. It does look like he's got six slotted items, but they're just incredibly weak items. The mech has long outlived its usefulness. The Ring of Akala is the same. I make me nervous here. <laughs> now the Blue Blade has born slaughtered. He can't even make a move. Oh, Jesus. He does have the buyback, but it'll be with 11 souls. He even walks into this. He's going to try to start the fight. There's the two hero call. Oh, Monovoid. Monovoid. Oh, he does end up going down. 800 gold oh, going to so play. What a big fight for Secret. ROTK frantically scrambling. E-Home have to be nervous now. The call down comes in. Gyrocopter arriving and looking to hold the lines. Stand strong, Ben. But Death there's Lord. the Kuro Death Lord from the high ground. Pounding into, C into ZY up here. Back, back. Turning it on RTZ. Can he win the fight? He looks to play. But he's got no manta, and CYF bails them out. Now the blink, Ion Shell, Kuro down. Even what the miraculous, most miraculous fights, it pales in comparison to the raw damage output of Ehome. And without even a second of hesitation, Arteezy insta buyback purchases a basher. He won't have a second life for a very long time now. That's ZYF in a nutshell. CTY, that's the guy we're talking about. But he just sneakily runs in. He's like, I also have 20k net worth. <laughs> Did everybody forget about that? If you watch this both games, it's now. my bad completely. We haven't really talked about the fact that he's 10, 0, and 10 right now. We focus so much on TTY. It's just absolutely stunning. He's almost got a full. All right, he actually does have a full MKB complete. And I think Secret is in a similar situation. They all in to kill the TA without realizing there's just an equally net uh, worth farm gyrocopter waiting in the rear. And he was late to the fight, too. Yeah, he got he there like come in. two heroes were dead. Night Stalker was on the run. The Dark Seer was just trying to get out as well. And oh, hey, call down, Black Cannon. Get the hell out of here. Oh, he home now. I won't let the Aegis for a little bit of time, but it's about to respawn, it looks like. Just a minute or so. And there's no anti-mage buyback. It's, this means they can push with Aegis, with two ultra-farmed cores, and a Darkseer that outstrips the Axon, even the Shadow Fiend of S4. So basically three farm cores on like one and a half. And Secret are just going to have to play pitch picture-perfect Dota with any chance of holding this. Yeah, and S4 doing his best to try to catch up, but what real items is he going to go for? He could go for the Butterfly, but you've got two heroes already countering it before it even comes out. A Satanic could help, but then he'd be left with zero damage. I don't really see what item he's gonna get to really change this game. Like, he would need a minimum of two, maybe an AC plus the Satanic, 
then he would have the damage to back it up, but... Or at least to be a threat to, to, to the support, if nothing else, in these fights. Oh, Arteezy, he's oh, getting caught out he here. just he bought back. Banter, oh, he's thrown to the low ground. That's pretty fortunate. Now the turn. Arteezy, one auto deck blinking out, but it's Zai who's left behind. Zai in a bit of trouble. Can he make his way out there? The Ghost Scepter desperately hanging on, but the going back shot. in! Arteezy, he charged in again. It'll pay with his life, but with no Arteezy. This is going to be nigh impossible for Secret. Massacred under the blazing guns of ZYF and CTY's endless crit. There's another Ehome. Ehome. Ehome have done it. They 2 0 Secret and they move forward here in the winner bracket. A shocker for Secret and fans around the world. But what a solid showing it was. I mean, Ehome took care of business. Neither of those games even looked particularly close. In the first game, Secret had the advantage, but Ehome staying strong in that second game. I mean, I thought Secret was going to.